This sounds like unpaid labor. Yes. Yes! <laughs> I mean, you do this get... This very American. Benefits. I'm surprised we don't have it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of British vs. American. Today, we're talking about prefects in the UK versus hall passes and hall monitors in the USOA. Today's British guest of choice is Heather. She's been on the Hi. channel a couple times now. You come from the South, so... Mm -hmm. not Tiny quite, town. Yeah, not <laughs> strong town. like the North. Weak like the South, says a man who lives in London, which a lot of Northerners think isn't part of the UK at all, so... It's a different country, by the way. Uh, so, hall monitors and hall passes. A lot of British people think they're just something from TV. How do they work? Like I said, this isn't in every school, but it depends. There are student ones, for instance, which I remember, like I said, they, they help out before school, letting, like, making sure that the kids are in the right places they need to be. They like having a little authority. And during recess slash lunch, there are people that kind of help out a bit beforehand to make sure that the students are in the right places, especially the younger students that are very young. But okay. in terms of the hall pass, yeah, I did, we definitely had hall passes when I was in elementary school and middle school. I feel like I didn't have it in any of my high schools, but we definitely had it in middle school and elementary school, which was essentially, I remember it being like a, a big bright piece of paper that was attached to a ruler and you had to be holding that. Uh, at one point, one of the schools had a lanyard and you had to have that if you if you were in the hallway to go to the bathroom or something. But okay, I, I can't wrap my head around this because I can understand at uh, secondary school, you might take advantage of leaving the classroom to, you know, skip school, just to have some time to skive. or bunk or wag. <laughs> as as per the previous video where we did, we talked about weird British words. Anyway, yeah. So you'd skive off school potentially in yeah. um, secondary school, mm. but primary school, elementary school, why do you need a hall pass then? Surely like that. What that's... if you're smoking weed in fifth grade? I don't know. <laughs> it's just to make sure everyone's safe, I guess. But. If the teacher's getting out of the class, you know, they know where you are. They know you've gone out of the class for a reason. It's very rare in primary school, I'd imagine, to be kind of like just sent off to do something, whereas secondary school would obviously send out kids to grab something from the cupboard or go tell someone something or whatever. But in primary school, there's no reason really to leave a classroom except if you need to go to the bathroom. I've seen some people from other countries say when they would leave class and someone would say, what are you doing? They'd say, oh, the teacher had sent me to get something. Yeah. And the other teacher would be like, oh, cool. Whereas. Yeah. I guess there's a lack of trust in our schools. Yeah, it, it sounds like there is a complete lack of trust, and especially at elementary level, uh, primary school level. I can't imagine a primary school kid leaving class and, you know, going well, off to- It's mostly to go to the bathroom. Do you yeah. not have to ask permission to go to the bathroom? Yeah, and then they say, yes, yes you can go to the bathroom. I and mean, then you go. and you go and then you come back. Admittedly, people But how would... long could you stay out? So for instance, the hall pass might, and ours didn't, but they might have some sort of time thing on it. It wasn't so formal as you have to be back within X amount of time. You know, like you never know what what you need to do in the bathroom. You don't want to be like you got to be back in twenty minutes and then, oh, you know. That's why I never went to the bathroom at school. <laughs> Fair. I did not drink enough water. <laughs> yeah. I had the that biggest sounds... bladder. I never would go to the bathroom one or two ever in school. Pretty much avoided it. That way, I didn't have to miss class. <laughs> I loved school that much. A question. How long do you have in between classes to like switch in like middle school and high school? It'd probably be around like seven minutes. That's so long. Five minutes. Um, well, it depends on the size of the school as well because- And the way it's built, if and, it's walkable. Exactly. Um, and if you're going from one end to the other and you only have like four minutes to do it, then- well, then you better run. You better run. But you guys don't have lockers to store your things. Yeah, we so do. We, oh, you do have lockers. Absolutely, we do. This is a thing that I've, most British people I've talked to do not have lockers. I think you went to a pretension, I mean, a, a nice school. <laughs> I went to two separate schools, oh, two separate secondary lockers. schools, and both of them had lockers. And you used them? And I used both, well, actually, wow. I didn't really use it much in my first school because it stank to high heaven, but. Just like a British phone booth. Just like a British phone booth. Phone box. <laughs> so, because so, we have nine periods during the day. Okay. Just like an average woman. And, uh, <laughs> And so that's nine different books and notebooks and cuadernos and things. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of only want to carry three to four with you because you can't carry a backpack around. My first school I went to, you were not allowed to have backpacks in the hallways just in case you could, you know, pull out something that you shouldn't have in school. So you had to use the locker to store things so you couldn't carry nine things. So that's where the thing of people literally carrying their notebooks yes. in American films come yes. from. They, they can't have a bag. You could bring the stuff to home and back to school, but once you get to school, put that in the locker, stuff that backpack in there, and uh, yeah. 
I mean, it's insane that you have to do that, but it makes sense. It's but a completely different world. I do just want to point out that when I moved to a more rural school in Southern New Jersey, the rules had flip-flopped and now you could carry your backpack. And because of this, it became more of a fashionable statement to have certain backpacks. Every single student at my school had an LL Bean backpack that had been monogrammed with their initials on it. And so it was like, oh, you had to have one of these, but they also had a lifetime warranty. So I was like, oh, that's nice. Mommy, please. Sorry, we got onto backpacks from hall <laughs> yeah. monitors and prefects, but I thought that was interesting that yes, we did have to do that. So the way that student hall monitors work in the schools that they have them, by the way, you know, we have nine periods. Yeah. Well, you can choose to take electives and you can also choose to have a period free. I chose to have study hall, meaning that instead of having all nine periods filled to the brim, I had one free, which I just used to get homework done. Mm -hmm. But you can also, in some schools, choose to use that period to monitor the halls and volunteer to make sure there's no crime. We did have an adult hall monitor mm -hmm. during one of my high schools. And this one was making sure the people that were going into the lunchroom were part of that lunch period. Now, I don't know how your lunches work, but we have a lot of students at the schools I went to. And so you had maybe four or five different lunch periods and everyone had a specific ID on it. And your ID, mine said, Evan Edinger on it, subscribe to my YouTube. I it's prolific before YouTube is invented. And it also had a specifically colored dot, depending on what period lunch. I had a blue dot, meaning I had fourth period lunch. I wasn't able to sneak into fifth period, the purple, or sixth period, the red, the yellow, the so on. So that way they had a whole monitor in front of the doors of the cafeteria who would be checking to make sure everybody has the right dot and no one's skipping their class to just hang out with friends in lunch. Okay. But I, with my broken brain, would lose my ID. And so I would cleverly just hold up a blue piece of paper on another white piece of paper and I'd get by most of the time. But at one point I was caught and they pulled me aside and went, what do you think this is? And I went, no, I, I just lost my ID. And then I had to serve my next two lunches in detention, which <laughs> it's just lame. You just eat and you're around kids that usually beat other people up and they're like, what are you here for? And you're like, counterfeit ID. <laughs> I just wanted to have my normal scheduled lunch. Is that any relatable to you in the UK? I mean, I suppose I don't really know much about detention because all the detentions I had were class detentions rather than individual detentions. Um, and oh, for an individual teacher? No, no. For, like, so you, if the class is acting up, the entire class goes into deten detention the together. The whole class gets detention? Yeah, the whole class gets detention. How is that fair? What if you were the good student? What, sorry, you, yes, clearly. <laughs> It's current solicitor, obviously. Wait, so if the whole class was acting up, mm -hmm. except you, you'd have to suffer too? Yeah. Um, That's not fair. I think I once got a detention because I was off ill and my class made a substitute teacher cry. Um, and so I was in detention with them because I was part of the class. That's not fair. I think we have a similar thing in the US now. I can't remember the name of it, but it has to do with the fact that if you get in a fight, regardless of who started it, or if you're involved at all, you get the same punishment. So if I punch you in the face, and the teacher gives both of us detention. Zero tolerance policy. Z zero tolerance policy, that's what yeah. it's called. And that, that is the stupidest idea we've come up with in America, but that's what this class detention sounds like. So in, in the UK, we do actually have a similar thing mm -hmm. to your hall monitors, okay. but we would just wouldn't call them hall monitors. So we do have people that are around to make certain that if you are, um, on lunch, everything's okay, and everyone's doing things the way they should be. The no one's, you know, causing a ruckus or whatever. Um, but they wouldn't necessarily be monitoring the school to make certain you're in your classes in the right place. And also, we have a much simpler system in terms of you have what nine periods and different lunch times. We have five normally, five um, periods, five periods, and uh, we would also have um, one lunch. Everyone would go to lunch at the same time. How do you small school? No, massive schools. Okay, what's your definition of small school? So let's put this out there. So I went from a big school in South Jersey to a rural one in which my class of 2008 had 151 people in it. That's small AF. So it was so small that they actually bundled in that 150 in my class. And then also there's 11th grade, there's the 10th grade, also with the middle school. So they had still, still multiple lunch periods, but maybe like two or three. Whereas my high school in Deptford my class was about 700. When I was in primary school, there were 12 people in my year. <laughs> in primary school, yes, Heather. I'm talking about high school. We had probably about 100 people every single year, because, except for sixth form. Because for instance, my primary school where I went, my elementary school, I think we had maybe like 20 people, 23 kids per okay. year, but that's also 
like you have loads of these primary schools in your area and then all of them eventually graduate to middle school and there's like two middle schools and then all of them then move to one high school. So it's almost like you, you say, oh, there's only 23 kids in my class, but then the other elementary school down the road and yep. the other elementary school. So it all builds up until high school. At my um, Deford High School, would have about 250 people per year. Yeah. And Washington Township was 500 per year. Wow. And that's not a city, by the way. I know there's going to be people that I guess went to London. Yeah, London. And or Philadelphia and they're like, well, 500 rookie numbers. But for like a suburb, 500 was a lot. So we'd have about 100 students in a year. Okay. And then um, in sixth form, that would be about doubled to 200, so two years of 200 at the top. So you'd like know everybody in your school? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> No, I, I am awful for faces, so I did not know everyone in my school, but I knew my year. And then we got to sixth form and I just didn't interact with the extra hundred people that joined, um, unless and they that's were my why classes. You don't have friends, Heather. That's why I don't have friends. I don't talk to people. I like how I said didn't and you went don't. <laughs> you went present tense, no friends. <laughs> no friends. Um, all right, so please explain prefects. So prefects are students that are promoted to a position of responsibility. Like Percy in their school. Weasley. Yes. He's a prefect. Yes. Percy, See? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Harry Potter. Teaching sweet. Americans British things. Yeah, so that's pretty much <laughs> the only time I'd heard of it before yeah. finding out it was real. <laughs> so you didn't believe it was real? Well, no, because it was from Harry Potter. It, you know, it was alongside Wizards it's and not, Dragons. It's not so the I dragon. didn't just, Yeah, I know, but they were all fan you're gonna tell me spello tape is real? Like obviously, it's really difficult when you didn't grow up in that culture to understand which parts were real because JK Rowling made up so many interesting things. Did you believe the house system was no, real? No, I didn't understand house houses as well. The whole like Ravenclaw, yeah. that yeah. that was just for Harry Potter. That's why it made it so cool. That's absolutely that's real. You guys have houses. Yeah, we have houses. We kind of had it in middle school a little bit based on colors. I was on like the gold team mm -hmm. and it was based on which hallway you were in. Yeah. And since there were six big hallways in my middle school, you know, then we had pride mm -hmm. and also the pride meaning for the- For, for the, the houses. Color. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I can't imagine pride. in America. <laughs> However, um, in, in classic my school fashion, uh, you, you were fighting the other teams based on one thing. What do you think that thing was? Ironically, you were fighting them on how infrequently your team would be fighting physically. What? If you had, there was a fight in between your team, you were like zero days since last incident. The whole school, if we could manage to have 15 days, 15, mm -hmm. with not one fist fight, we would get all of us an ice cream social. God, did it take ages. I think it wasn't until like the final, like it was summer. It was like right before June and we finally hit 15 days and it was so wow. exciting because you'd come to 14 and you'd see this big thing on the wall in the cafeteria being like, we're on day 14. Everyone's like, yeah. And someone's like, what? <laughs> and then, that's it. No ice cream social for me. Anyway, um, prefects. Prefects do exist. They are real. Um, and they are students that have responsibilities. Oh. They are promoted above the average student body and they are put on display as... Um, How do you get selected? You have to apply. It's a you're full uh, application you're and no, 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 interview joking. process. No, it is. In most places. Obviously, it will vary school to school, but generally you Ge apply and you interview for the position so and then the that teachers want choose. Yeah. Yeah. I really thought, genuinely thought you were going to say, the teacher just goes, which one is the teacher's pet type person? Mm -hmm. And they go, yeah. he would make a good one. You have to apply? Well, the teachers do choose. So it is at the end of the day, the teachers okay. will choose. I think there are some schools that will elect, but I don't think that's very common. Um, I've only ever seen it as they- In Hogwarts, I think they elected, right? I don't know. As actually. in, I don't think they applied in Hogwarts. <laughs> You're going to Google this. <laughs> Call Luke Cutforth. <laughs> Hey bud, quick question for a video. Hmm. You're, you are the phone a friend Harry Potter expert. Okay. So the question is, Heather and I are making a video on hall monitors and prefects. And she said that you have to apply to be a prefect. And I went, no. in Hogwarts, I think you were just chosen. Yeah, you were, because Ron gets prefect and he didn't expect it. And yes. Didn't know it was coming. Yes, so that's why when I found out that in real English culture you have to apply, I went, that's not canon. That's not in Harry Potter. Well, let me check with Rebecca, because she was head girl. Uh, Rebecca, when you were head girl I know all these school, fucking did you have to apply to, to, like, okay, she did have to apply. She did? Yeah. How do you feel marrying someone that was known as the head girl? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, Evan. <laughs> there you go. So that's why I was, so you, did you apply? Um, yeah, so I mean, uh, primary school, I was just given a prefect position because I was in my final year, didn't have to apply, we just got handed to us. And like, you hand out the milk cartons. 
I actually don't think we had many responsibilities in primary school. I can't even remember. Um, we didn't do much. Uh, we were pretty useless prefects. It was more mm. of a like, you are the final year, therefore here be proud you're old now. Um, in secondary school, um, yeah, you applied and you interviewed um, and then uh, yeah, they did a massive assembly and were like, oh, these are the prefects, congratulations, everyone. Oh, so you get to like go up and be like, that's me. And <laughs> do you get to wear a sash that says you're a prefect and or a pin? You have a badge. A badge, a Prefect cool, cool, badge. Cool. Um, and so in secondary school, often there'll be two sets of prefects. There'll be okay. year 11 prefects and year 13 prefects. 13? Yeah, year 13. There's a, oh, okay. I. <laughs> sorry, for us, it's 12th grade and then you graduate. So I was like 13, that's someone who got held back. <laughs> no, so it's uh, year, year, 11 seniors, and year 13, the seniors. So year 11 is GCSE year, and year 13 is A-level A-levels, year. The owls. <laughs> Sorry, this is my only... No. This is how you relate to British culture. So do, do they have different responsibilities, depending on? Yes. Um, so the main difference being that year 13 um, finishes after exams. So in the summer, around this time in June, they would have their exams, and then they'd leave school prior to exams, for so study leave, and they just don't come back. So they never have to come back. Um, they're oh. done with school. So there's a good few months where they're just not around. So year 11 prefects are, have done like semi-prefect duties for most of the year. They then step in and step up and do the kind of responsibilities that maybe Which, otherwise might What are the responsibilities? It depends on the school. Um, so for the higher level prefects, the year 13 prefects, you have a variety of different things you have to do. You have to represent the school. Mm. So if you have parents' evenings or you have um, days uh, for new prospective students, mm. they would do speeches and um, kind of wander around and uh, show people around, um, try wow. and like talk to the parents, things like that. And then in the school day, they would be kind of responsible for... This sounds like unpaid labor. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you do this get is very American. Benefits. I'm surprised we don't have it. <laughs> there are benefits. The main one is being it good for CVs. CV, yeah, it's really good for the Resume. CV. Wow. I mean, like head girl, head boy. Okay, but what's it? Because supposedly Luke's wife is yes. was the head girl. Yeah. What's the difference between a head girl and a prefect? Do you have to like apply as a prefect to be the level up? So is there this a is the hierarchy of prefects. So. Okay. All prefects are prefects, but they have different responsibilities and roles. So and prefects are squares. What? Sorry, all rectangles are rectangles, but some rectangles are squares. Uh, okay, so yes. Yeah. Very bad math <laughs> joke, I apologize. Um, so you've got at the top, you've got the head boy, head girl, or captain. Sometimes they'll just have two captains, gender neutral. Um, and then you have the vice. So the vice, head boy, head girl, or, or captains. Okay. Um, and those are kind of the face of the school. When you have events going on, they will be the ones doing the key speeches and being the representative of the students. So at those they're like class president and class vice president and class secretary and class treasurer. You know, like we're, who we elect democratically because we're Democrats and well, we, we democratically vote in the US. We have freedom. Maybe. Do you not have that? Plan? No. Oh, there it is. So that, because I was like, I don't know, as soon as you started describing what they actually do, I was like, that's what the class president and stuff does, but yeah. we elect them. Okay. We don't just allow any cronyism to happen and they, you can just, you know, apply. No, you have no. to be voted in by your people. Yeah. You have to campaign, like vote for Pedro. That was, oh, that's a thing, like that's, from Napoleon Dynamite, yes. Yeah, so no, uh, we would have elections in school to vote in bodies, but prefects are chosen just, by teachers. Just some bodies. Some bodies, yeah. Just I'd them. like some <laughs> bodies on the floor over there. <laughs> so you'd have like different uh, student, bodies. student bodies that would have different um, purposes, and then you'd elect someone to that body to better your environmental whatever uh, impact on, on school or something similar. But the prefects are chosen that by was a teachers. That school you went to. <laughs> Could we stop using paper and instead use the chalkboard? <laughs> Is that a good accent? <laughs> so I do you want to go through lot. the actual hierarchy of what other things are? Oh, I'm headboard? sorry. There's more? There's more. There's Okay, so there's prefect, there's the girl that gives head. What is next? Well, that's the top. You're going down. You're going the wrong way. So that's like okay. the, the prime people, the prime well, prefects. there's people below the prefects. Yeah, well, I mean, so that's like the head of the hierarchy. And then underneath that, you'll kind of have, uh, depending on the school. Um, so in my school, where uh, my second school for uh, secondary, we had houses. And so we had the head of houses. So we had each house had its own prefect or two prefects um, that would kind of okay. run assemblies. Um, you and run? As what do you mean run assemblies? There's, the, the teachers run the assemblies. Sometimes. The prefects would effectively do the teacher's job and they'd go, right guys, let's start the assembly and then here we're going to talk about this or we're going to How have some poor performance from somebody. Well, they'd sit through how many years of someone um, of someone else doing it and then in their final year they'll do it themselves and get the skills experience, experience associated with running an assembly i think that's so useful as a good skill to have all of our assemblies i made a video like ages ago with my friend dodie about it but ours were about like 
the tropical rainforest, and we'd have a guy come and be like, hey, you know what's worth saving the rainforest? And then he would do this really cool song about saving the rainforest, and you'd be like, yeah. As we got into like middle school and high school, the assemblies are more like, see this picture of a guy's face? He was really happy. And now this next picture, look at it, it's bashed in. He took drugs and jumped off of a roof or something. And you're like, oh no. They were less fun than Save the Rainforest. You guys don't have pep rallies, so. No, we do not have pep rallies. Those are the fucking best. <laughs> there, there's like such an energy that's in the room when everyone is like coated in face paint and you're seeing a basketball star try a layup and fail and you're like, you're, and then you got the guys in the mascots and the cheerleaders are doing their little dance and you're like, I got off a half day because of this. <laughs> there's nothing better at, at school level. It's real nice, sit on the bleachers, which you don't have. So there's, sorry, just to really recap here, head boy head, and head girl, prefects, Vice. and then you have the people that have the houses and forms. Yes, you have a head boy, head girl, um, then you have vice, yeah. head boy, head girl. Then you have, depending on the school, you have different kinds of prefects underneath that. So you've got house prefects, you'd have um, potentially welfare prefects, you might have prefects dealing welfare, with as in there in welfare? student welfare. Okay. So, um, one the- Not Almadol? <laughs> no. That's what I thought. <laughs> These students, they're elected they because their parents it. are on the ball. Um, so one of the things about prefects is they're meant to be a bridge between the student body and the teachers. So they were kind of there as a friendly face that maybe a young student might be able to go to and say, oh, we have an issue. Or... Are they corruptible? <laughs> How much money can I get for little posh Jimmy Jimmy Boris to... To, to do something for you. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's anything you'd want to pay for that a prefect can do. Uh, I mean, they, they generally just play with, with teachers and okay. students and they wouldn't necessarily have the final say in anything. See, in the US, when a student lays with a teacher, they get arrested. <laughs> the teachers. <laughs> Sorry, bad puns. <laughs> I at least just still got it with the puns here. It's, what's funny is if you look back on the video, as soon as you say lays, you can see this weird like light up where I went. Like, moment, I can make a button. I can make a button. Yeah. So when I taught my one day at Highgate, Highgate School up in a little posh town in London, I did find it interesting that there was I think five minutes in between classes. This is a very old school, and there were many floors, and these students would have to like go around these. these beautiful grand staircase and down to the other buildings because supposedly there's not one British school in this country, even the most prestigious, that is one building. You guys always have that other part of the school that's in some other building that you feel like maybe near the gym where the health room is. Yeah. We had containers just randomly on the fi on a field. I heard about that. That's a thing. Just, they were classrooms and containers. Either way, I couldn't contain all the interesting things in this video, so we've gone on way too many tangents. Uh, but... Wrapping up. Fascinating. Um, I don't think one has it over the other. I like that we have a democratically elected system when it comes to, like, vice presidents and stuff. Yeah. But I think it's interesting that you guys actually have to apply. Yeah. That way the people that want the power, want that, like, prestige can get it. So I yeah. guess that's fine. I mean, there's always drama around who actually does and doesn't get um, the positions, especially as it's kind of chosen by teachers. It's not a democratic process. You don't really know what went in behind it. And they're looking for certain qualities. Such as? Um, such as uh, you want to be able to be, um, well, ac good academically. Uh, they want you to kind of be a example of what young students should strive to be. So you want to be kind of very friendly, very approachable, good academically, well presented, so always want to be wearing your uniform correctly, generally be goody two shoes around school, kind of, um, and just kind of the the best students that everyone can look up to and try and emulate. Um, as well as then being able to represent the school on like a large basis, being able to give talks, being vocal enough to actually do the duties that you're required to do as, as a prefect. I'd rather have someone that was a bit more normal so that he was more approachable by the students. Yeah. But I understand what they're doing. They want to be represented well. All right. Interesting. Well, I hope you enjoyed this bit of a throwback UK versus US video. Thank you, Heather, for coming on the old channel. And uh, I have more videos on some different UK US words that I find interesting coming up next Sunday. So be sure to subscribe and uh, go click my last one right here on other words that Heather has been in. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next Sunday.